Hello, welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I am your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Lamar Baxter. Lamar is a business development representative for Entrust Administration, Inc. He has over 20 years of financial experience. In addition to specializing in self-directed retirement accounts, he's knowledgeable about residential mortgage loans for both primary homeowners and investors. He has experience in commercial lending, accounts receivable factoring, and private notes secured by real estate. He's able to provide his clients, partners, financial professionals, real estate professionals, and investors with the tools required to invest in real estate related transactions with a self-directed IRA account and actually alternative investments, which is mostly what we're going to be talking about. Uh, so like I said, today we will be talking about alternative investments besides real estate in an IRA or Roth account. Um, now, we previously discussed real estate. You can see that interview under past episodes at www.financialinsidersweekly.com. So before we get started, I just want to caution our viewers that we're discussing issues in a very complex area. This is just a starting point for a bigger discussion. We want you to meet with uh, qualified legal and tax advisors and other professionals like uh, Lamar uh, that can help you in this process. So Lamar, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Okay. So why did you get into this area of offering independent trust services for IRAs? Uh, well, what happened in 2008, uh, of course, we all know the economy had gone over the cliff. Uh, I'd been in the real estate industry for like 13 years and um, at that point, it just wasn't sustainable for his full-time employment. So I started to look around, want to stay in the financial industry. So uh, of course, having been in it that many years, I want to stay, make sure I stayed in that area. So I pulled all of my money out of the stock market in late 2008. Mm -hmm. And that was, let's say, November 2008, and I'll say towards the beginning of the following years when I actually started looking around. And I was actually being um, recruited by both interest in two other major custodians in the traditional arena. Mm -hmm. I'd actually accepted an offer for one of the major custodian or traditional custodians, but at the same time was reluctant because I started to see a much more of a decline in the market and I, I had a problem in terms of trying to advocate or pitch something that I actually pulled out my money out of the market. So of course, after speaking with the interest group and then also having a uh, background, some of a back, somewhat of a background doing non-recourse loan with self-directed IRAs, I felt this was a perfect fit, something based on my background and something that I felt comfortable educating the public on. Okay, good. So why would someone consider the alternative of a self-directed IRA with an independent trustee? Well, our motto is invest in what you know and understand, take control of your investment, which should be really the model of, er, model of everyone moving forward. I think a lot of people got a little complacent in terms of putting their trust into someone else as it relates to what was best for them as it relates to their investment and their future. I like to believe that the general public has a lot more savvy in terms of taking control of their own retirement account and growing their retirement account and basing it on an area or in an area that they have expertise in. I like to believe everyone has a a gift or a talent in a certain area that they can actually grow their retirement account and the self-directed IRA is a perfect vehicle for that. I think the other thing uh, beyond that, and it's nice to say take control you know, of your own, but what it comes down to is that people have been looking for more alternatives. And so even people who are working <clears throat> with advisors, um, the advisors may be placing them into some sort of a self-directed type because, because this is the type of account you can put in alternatives in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so how is your service different from a self-directed plan at a bank or a brokerage company? Well, based on our plan agreement versus the plan agreement of a traditional custodian, they have limitations in terms of what they can offer their investor clients. They will use the term of self-directed IRA, for example, self-directed meaning you have a choice, but the choice is usually limited to what they're offering. Mm -hmm. Our, we basically have 
in, when it comes to the list of in terms of alternative investments that we offer, in addition to the client having the option to take advantage of traditional investments, there's only two asset classes that you cannot invest in with the self-directed IRA, and that would be life insurance and collectibles. So think outside of those two restricted areas and sky is the limit. So hopefully that a lot of people are kind of taking the blinders off and really thinking outside of the box in terms of all the different investment options that's available to them. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> So what types of retirement plans do you handle? We offer pr pretty much the same type of retirement plans as the traditional custodians. Uh, we offer the traditional IRA, the Roth IRA, the SEP, the SIMPLE. Uh, we have the individual K, uh, which also is called the solo K. Mm -hmm. We also have the Coverdale and the HSA, which also can be self-directed. So pretty much what you can get uh, within the traditional arena, you can also get that same type of plan with us, but it would be self-directed. Right. So the 401k that you're talking about, the solo K, means that you're not going to have a broad participation by a lot of employees. Right. Yeah. Your restriction with an individual K or solo K is that it's limited to you and a, maybe a spouse or you and a general partner. So okay. there can be no employees. However, as it relates to the simple IRA, is that option is available for small and medium-sized business with 100 employees or less, where both the employer and the employees can be offered that type of uh, arrangement. Okay. So what kinds of unusual investments besides real estate do you see being held in IRAs and Roth accounts? When I say unusual, um, I guess thinking outside of the box based on what most people are used to, I had a uh, three gentlemen come to my office a couple of years ago where this is when things really were pretty bad for us with the economy. The company we're working for were going out of business and they couldn't figure out a way to purchase this business. They didn't have the credit, even if they had the credit, the banks weren't lending to start up businesses. So looking at IRS code 4975 in terms of what you can and cannot do, uh, they decided to establish a multi-member LLC where they had actually loaned money to the multi-member LLC. Keep in mind they're not related, so there's no disqualified person restriction. So they were able to use the capital within their retirement accounts to actually purchase this LLC, which in essence purchased the business they were looking to purchase. I thought that was one of the most creative ideas that I've actually seen, and actually they're doing great to this day. Oh, that's good news. Um, okay, are, are there any other particular, I guess just like, what are some unusual uh, items uh, that you're seeing, different types of investments that people are making uh, that, are, you know, so it's not a regular stock or bond type of a thing? or Well, I mean, or... nothing seems unusual for me, <laughs> especially for the last three, four years. Have but, you been um, seeing anybody? For the like... most part, life settlements is something that's taking okay. off. Life this is where um, it may be, a little be, may be a little morbid to some, where you're, there's a lot of people who have maybe two, three life insurance policies, and they're looking to maybe cash out maybe one or two of the policies to carry them through retirement because keep in mind a lot of people lost money in the market and they don't have the capital that they had previously prior to the market crash so for them to basically sell that policy to a, an investor or a group of investors this is one of the ways a self-directed IRA is being used to where a fund is being created because keep in mind you're restricted from purchasing or investing directly into any type of life insurance so the conduit would be through the LLC and directly through a third party who's actually purchasing these policies and they're making high double digit returns and the un I'm not going to say unfortunate part but one of the realities of life is that we're all going to pass away so it's a guaranteed return so what's happening is they may purchase the policy at 65 cents on the dollar in terms of face value and 35 percent of the profit goes into that fund for purchasing mm -hmm. that policy okay <clears throat> So what kinds of investments do you, do you think are well suited to hold in an IRA or a Roth? My opinion? Yeah. I would say real estate, anything that's tangible. There's a lot of people investing in precious metals, golds, foreign currency. The currency, in my opinion, is a little risky because there's a lot of volatility in, it in terms of the different governments and the different countries. So there's a lot of risk there, in my opinion. Uh, private loans. Uh, there's, as like I mentioned earlier, that's one of the areas that when I pull my money out of the market in November 2008, I'm actually loaning money secured by a first deed of trust against real estate. Loan to value usually doesn't exceed 65 percent 
loan to value, and six to nine months is the term, charge 12 to 14 percent. For those who don't want to get into quote unquote real estate, this is an excellent way through an alternative method to become the bank, so to speak, and you have, once again, it's not a tangible asset, but you have security against a tangible asset, which is something that's picking up a lot of steam. Not to mention there's a lot of businesses that are failing right now because they've lost their credit lines. The banks uh, have either reduced the credit lines or taken them away, and that was a source that they used to pay, take care of payroll and so on and so forth, where someone can basically come in with a self-directed IRA or funds from a self-directed IRA, invest in that existing business, which has maybe a strong business model, but they just can't operate without that additional capital. There's a good way to receive monthly return as well as maybe a percentage of the profit. So there's a lot of different opportunities out there in this uncertain market. All right. So a lot of people have been thinking about, you know, uh, I'd like to invest in real estate, but then real estate has to be managed. Right. And uh, so the types of things that you're talking about, these loan type transactions, again, the return on them for the most part is considered to be interest. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is uh, uh, a uh, tax exempt income as far as these uh, IRAs is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, or, or tax deferred if it's a, a regular IRA, but that, you know, yeah. so you can just keep on reinvesting right. and growing this fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think, yeah, the passive investment type of approach uh, can be preferable in many ways, and, and you can be avoiding a lot of headaches that you could have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, for other alternative types of things. And like I said, it's, it's a good way, like you said, to take a passive approach in terms of taking advantage of some alternative investment options. Everyone's not suited to invest in something that's going to require a lot of time and attention and even maybe education. There is a simple model in place, and you know they're at, at peace in terms of t the investment. Then I think it's a good marriage. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What are the most common alternative investments that you think are being held in self-directed IRAs or Roth. So we said real estate. I think is real going to estate. Be I would common. say would be the number one asset class. Private placements and private placements goes a lot of different directions. I mean, there's funds being created to invest in businesses, to purchase deeds of trust, to purchase bulk REO, uh, you name it. But I've actually had a situation where um, an individual had actually started a business where he was purchasing cars overseas at a huge discount and they had actually created a fund in order to make it possible and somehow they were acquiring cars for 25 cents on the dollar overseas and coming back here to the US and selling them. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, <laughs> to me. <laughs> it really just has it really has a lot to do with access to inventory whatever the case may be, but once again, it's an allowable transaction and if the numbers work, why mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit more about private money mortgages. 